eight, or you don't wanna spend a lot of time editing. That's the point here. So, in the download below, you're gonna get five LUTs, six Lightroom presets, and seven Photoshop actions. Let's get into the Photoshop actions first because I edit 90% in Photoshop, maybe a little bit tweaks here and there in Lightroom, but I find Photoshop the best for me, so let's get into those ones first. So you got seven presets here, Soft OT, Hard OT, Pepper, Ivy, Whiteout, Midnight, Dawn. All of them are different. Not everything is gonna work on every picture. You might have to tweak it, you might have to play with it, and that's what we're here to do. So the first one we're gonna look at is Soft OT. OT stands for orange and teal. Once you apply that, you're gonna notice your picture has like an orange teal feel, but it's kind of like washed out, faded. So pick and choose. I find this one works best for me with like portraits that are naturally lit, daylight, brighter stuff. It gives you that like vintagey orange and teal feel that you see on Instagram a lot. It's money in the bank in my opinion. I think that's one of my favorite ones to use on portraits. Obviously I go into like more tweaks here and there and refinements afterwards, but it's a good jump off point. Next one, hard OT, hard orange and teal, obviously. This one's solid too, but it has a more specific use than the soft OT. I don't know, if you apply this one to like a landscape shot in the middle of the day with intense sunlight, it kind of like washes out all the blues and turns everything like red. When you download this and decide to fire it onto one of your photos, don't freak out. This one's more designed for like darker portraits. If you like shooting with neon, it looks great on that. Give it a shot. Again, you're gonna have to test all these and see what you like, where you like it. You've got Pepper. This one's designed for like a very bright photo if you wanna just bring it down a bit, nothing like too crazy. Make it a little bit darker, a little bit more moody. It's money for that. Ivy, this is a look that I found quite a bit over Instagram is like that desaturated, moody green look. Fire that on, play with the opacity, it's fantastic. Another great thing about the Photoshop presets is once you get into them, you'll see above your photos, it'll make like a little folder with the name of the preset. You can open up that folder and tweak the individual settings to make it your own. I absolutely encourage you to like get in there and pick these things apart. Oh, this one's too dark for me? Get rid of that contrast. Whatever you want, make it your own. That's why we're here. That is why we're here. We're here for you. Not for me, for you. So when you fire that white out onto your photos, um, you've got like darker bluish shadows. I find this one works really nicely with like darker, moodier photos. Portraits for the most part. I find with this one personally, I like to lower the opacity to probably around like 50%. It gives you like, it retains most of the actual color in the photos and then it still gives you those like bluish, cool shadows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Midnight, Midnight is just a simple black and white photo. I don't know if you guys have seen my previous video about how to get that like punch you in the face black and white, but I will put it right up here, watch the video, and it's just like a quick, it's like a one click, boom, crispy black and white. That's one that you can actually just like, hey, I need a black and white photo. Pop it on, we're done, we're done. You don't have to tweak it, it's just, High contrast, nice, crisp, sharp, black and white. That's it, that's all there is to it. And Dawn, this one's probably my favorite in the Photoshop presets. I love it for like nicely daylit or sunset photos of landscapes, even portraits if you wanna spice it up a bit. It creates like a warm tones, like, like desaturated, moody. Just honestly, just give it a shot. The download's right in the description. Click that download, you're gonna get a zip file, instructions are in there, or you can just keep watching the video and we will get into how to install all of these things for you. It's very, very easy. And that just about does it for the Photoshop presets. Let's slide on over into Lightroom and take a look at some of these. So one thing I did with all of these presets and LUTs and Photoshop actions is I didn't make them all exactly identical. So essentially, depending on what program you're using, I'm trying to encourage you to like, you know, incorporate both, use different aspects for different purposes. In Lightroom, some of the presets are the same, but you're also getting some different variations. I kept it kind of mild, per se. I find a lot of the LUTs that you download look great when you're seeing examples, but then you go to like import it into Lightroom and it's just like, like it just, explodes, oversaturated. Why are all the clouds orange and purple and it's in the middle of the night? I don't get it. So I kept it kind of like mild. You've got some simple ones. Brighten, if you have a dark photo, you just 
click brighten brings it up a little bit then you can start playing with the colors and get it the way you like it you got your hard ot soft ot those two apply the same as photoshop that's just a preference thing if you prefer lightroom apply those in lightroom if you prefer photoshop use photoshop for those ivy same concept as photoshop midnight is lightroom's version of Photoshop's black and white. It's a little bit different in the way that it turns your photo black and white. So what I would encourage you to do is try it in Lightroom, try it in Photoshop, see what you like better and use that. And the last Lightroom preset is sunny. And it's just to bring up the warmth in your photo a little bit. You know, like if you're outside shooting and you wanna give it like that warm feel, even though it was kind of snowy and cold out, Canada problems. Uh, just pop on that sunny, make it a little bit warmer, and again, just tweak it from there. You gotta make it your own. That's what we're here for. I can't tell you how to live your life. Just, just do it, do it yourself. Not your babysitter. And last, but certainly not least, we've got the LUTs. Five LUTs, you know, it's a little bit of variation, a, little, a couple different styles to choose from. Again, it's all what you're going for, what's gonna look best on the footage. Some LUTs might be great for like say a beach vacation, but then you visit Iceland and it's cold and snowy in the mountains and it just doesn't make sense. You don't want like this like warm orange and teal island vibes when you're in the middle of the mountain. So use it at your own discretion. So first up, we got Dawn. And Dawn works very similarly to the Photoshop preset in the sense that it warms things up, you know, like if you're trying to get that warm, homey, like, mmm, like, mmm, mmm, feel good feeling in your videos, you know, it's perfect. Like I said, everything has its purpose, everything has its place. You don't wanna be filming like a cold winter tundra scene and then just fire this on there so people think it's like snowing outside but plus 25 degrees. Doesn't make sense. Use it when it's appropriate. After that, we've got Soft OT. Soft OT is a solid one, same as Photoshop, same as Lightroom. It's that orange and teal look. It's a little bit desaturated, pulled back. So your viewer is gonna be like, oh yeah, I see what he did there with the orange and teal video look, but it's like nice and muted. You'll see once you download it, like unzip that file, load it up, import that LUT. You'll see that it might be like a little bit too stylized, you know what I mean? But in the case of the LUTs, I went a little bit overboard on the saturation so you could pull it back. If I didn't put enough of it in there, then you might wanna stylize your videos a little bit more and you wouldn't have anything to work with. So. Like I said, personal preference for me is around 50 to 60%, but play with it, see what you like. You might wanna bump it up to like 200%. So it just like poof, hits you in the face. Uh, orange and teal. I don't know, I, I'm sorry, I got a little excited there. Orange, orange and teal just gets me going. Whiteout is intense. It's gonna give you those hard blue shadows. 50 to 60%, I find that that's the sweet spot. It like changes your video just enough that it's like, Yep, he edited that, I see what he did there. It looks fantastic, but it's not like too much that you're like, whoa, why is this whole guy's whole life blue? What I would recommend, so whiteout, kind of like in terms of usage, is like the counterpart to Dawn. Dawn would be like nice and warm and, oh yeah, I, this guy's going to the beach for sure, and whiteout's like, yep, he lives in Canada, it's minus a thousand degrees in the middle of June, pick and choose. You could probably use both in a one video, depending on what the video's about. Moving on, DMMH. This one is like dialed back. It's it's similar to whiteout in like the bluish shadows, but it's like a more of a tealy blue. The blacks are like lifted a bit. Oh, and did I mention all this stuff was free? I wonder how many times I've said free in this video. Somebody count it and throw it in the comments below. Free, 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 free. All this is free. And then we're gonna go to DMRS is the last one. And this one is like a nice like, soft peachy color. I find this one is great for like travel videos or like cool B-roll sequences. It's not the kind of LUT that you would wanna put on like a talking head segment. It is stylized, that's the intention. So use it sparingly. Now, let's get into the stuff that nobody really wants to talk about. I'll keep it quick so you guys don't just stop watching because obviously there's gonna be something funny at the end. <sighs> Always is. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through the installation process. 
not the installation process. We're gonna go through like the instructions on how to get these things going, starting with LUTs. Now LUTs are very, very simple. What I like to do is put an adjustment layer above your footage. On that adjustment layer, you're gonna select that adjustment layer, head over to the right side, and go to the Lumetri color panel. You're gonna hit the Creative tab, it's gonna drop down, and right under the title, you're gonna see a little drop down menu that says Look, None. Click the None part, go to Browse, and find the folder where you saved your LUTs that you downloaded. Click whichever LUT you wanna use, and then right underneath you're gonna find the sliders to adjust the saturation and blah 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 and again you get to like tweak it make it your own easy peasy that'll take you like two seconds you'll be up and running editing videos like a champ in no time speed is the name of the game next up let's move over to Lightroom installing the presets is easy once you have the photos that you want to edit import all those photos in the develop panel you're gonna go over to the left side you'll see presets little plus button then you've got create then you're gonna go down to import presets Presets. Again, find where you saved your presets, highlight whichever ones you want to import, and hit that import button. Boom, they're down on the left side in the little drop down menu. You can just hover over them to see what it's going to do to your photo. And once you have the one that you want to start as your jump off point, you just click it, and then you can move over to the right side and just tweak everything to make it your own. Dude, I feel like I'm just going to get t shirts printed that say, make it your own. It's super easy to use. A monkey could do it. Hey, if I can do it, you can do it. I have faith in it.